everybody. How's it going? Oh, I get the big chair today. I got the big chair today. You gave it up yesterday, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Beat me up, Scotty. This is a cool chair. How's it going? Good. All right. Everybody have a good weekend? Mm -hmm. Drink enough, eat enough, all that. All right, good. Well, this is called the question and answer. So. <laughs> I did. I got some sleep last night. I called it early. I didn't hurt myself. I went to bed at about 1 30, 2 o'clock, maybe 2 o'clock. And so my days of watching the sun come up are over and I don't, I don't miss them. So well, that's for younger people now. So talk to me. Who's got a question? Come on. Well, that's a good question. Thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the question is, can you guys hear what she said? Okay. The question is basically, when I get an audition for a show that I've never been on before to guest star on a show and I'm not familiar with the show, how do I go about that? What do I do? Do I binge watch? Do I watch a few episodes? Okay. What I normally do is exactly that. If I'm going in for, and it, 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 it happened to me as recently as like a year ago. Uh, just a show that I had never seen, and um, and maybe it was maybe it was two years ago. A show that I had never seen that shot in Portland, Oregon. It was called uh, Leverage, and I had never seen the show. And the producer is a very dear friend of mine, and I, so I couldn't really call the producer and say, hey, "I've never seen your show." <laughs> so so I just yeah I binge watched. I, I watched probably three episodes to understand who the leads are, what each one does, what their job is. And then, and then I went in and, um, and I do that actually before I, before I audition. I don't do it, I don't wait until I get the job because I think it, it helps me to understand all the characters, the relationships and uh, of who I'm talking to in the scene. And so I'll watch before I go to, into the audition. If I have time, if I have time. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you get let, what we call last minute auditions and you get a call at, 10.30 in the morning to show up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And, uh, you know, then there's, you just take the script and you learn it as quickly as possible and just, and they can't expect a brilliant audition. In, they just can't. They cannot expect a brilliant audition in five hours. They, you know, they, they know it's, this is a last minute thing. This is how much time we had, so this is how much time we gave you. And so give it your best shot. Yes. So my understanding is most of the roles the, that you're auditioning for, your agent finds and sends to you. How much control, how much influence do you provide your agent over what to look for? Or is it, do you trust them to go find something they think? Well, like, I mean, my agents know me well enough that uh, that's a good question. Did everybody hear the question? Mm -hmm. uh, how much control or how much input do I have when my agents are sending me out on an audition or to a guest star on a show, how much input, input do I have on that? And the answer to the question is, my agents know me well enough and they know pretty much what I'm willing to do and what I'm willing not to do, or not willing to do rather, and, and um, yeah, we just handle it like that. And if, if something's right on the border, they'll call me and they'll say, are you interested in doing this? There's not a lot of money in it, um, but so-and-so is a name actor, so-and-so is a name director, and this is what they've directed before, and there's not a lot of money here, but they would like to see you. And then they leave it up to me. So, you know, it's that. Yes? What are some of the most memorable roles you've done? Maybe the best one and the worst one. Kind of, I remember this because it was, I really liked it, and this one was just horrible, and that's why I remember it. Well, you talked about that. Were you, were you here yesterday yes. for a Q&A? Yeah, mm -hmm. well, you know, the worst one I think was uh, I, I, the way I died in one was in, in, uh, in uh, The Hills Have Eyes. I did a, a movie called The Hills Have Eyes, 
part something, and I, don't, I honestly don't remember whether it was part two or three or four, whatever it was. And, uh, and I'm not sorry I did the role, but it's, it's questionable. It's like, I wouldn't, like, I'm a married man, but if I was going on a date, I wouldn't take the date to see that movie, I promise you. <laughs> Especially the way I die in this movie. So, um, so that's probably one that, um, that I, yeah, I, I have a little bit of regret about for some reason or another. But listen, I'm in the movie and, you know, Wes Craven produced it and my scenes, he actually came to Africa and directed. So I was, I was very pleased to have worked with the, the late Wes Craven. And um, so there's, there's bittersweet there, there's good and bad to it. And as far as the best thing I've ever done, I like to think, uh, I guess, the you know, I, I, I like the television series that I've been a part of, um, whether it be as guest stars or uh, a series regular. I, I really like Beauty and the Beast. I like being on it. I like the movie, Cru I, I co-starred in the movie Cruising, which was like my first big job that got me into the unions. It got me into Screen Actors Guild, um, which is a very hard union to get into. Um, and, and I know everybody here, or a lot of people here, can relate to difficulty getting into a union, whatever it is, whether it's the plumber's union, ele electrician's union, because as you know, unions kind of shut their doors because they don't want non-union people working with them mm -hmm. unless you've been fostered by somebody and brought into the union, fathered in, uncled in, or something like that. So the movie Cruising, uh, which uh, was, it starred Al Pacino, and I had a really nice role in that, and I got to work with an Academy Award winning director, William Friedkin, and uh, the subject matter was a little rough, um, but it was the first thing I ever did, and I, I am proud of it. I'm proud of it. So, Thank you. there you go. Anybody? Hey. I just um, I, I just finished a um, uh, a video. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was trying. I, I'm thinking of word phrases. It, it wasn't a music video. I just finished a video game, and it's something I've never done before. Um, it's all motion capture, so I'm both on camera and off camera. You know, it's my voice and my likeness. So they dress you in that real funny black suit with all the white dots on it, and you have a helmet on with a swing arm on the helmet that comes out and, hang on. It's a suit, it basically, and it's, um, see if I can find it. And, uh, and they dress you in a suit and they put you out on the floor like this and the floor is all marked out almost like a basketball court and they call that the volume. And you're out on the volume all around, all around the uh, room, uh, down low and up high, and even in the ceiling, there are cameras. There are infrared cameras that go all the way around the room, uh, four walls. And, and so they're infrared, and these white dots that are all over you are reflectors. And so they're picking up all of the motion that you do, and then they load that information into a computer. Now you're getting to, it, that's as far as I go with computer geek stuff, because I, I know nothing. And they manipulate it in whichever way they want. But I know the likeness is going to be very much like me, because I have a, I have a, somewhere in my 700 pictures, I have a uh, 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 illustration of what I'm going to look like in the movie or in the video game. Okay, so here's... Oh. Okay, you can pass this round. That's what I'm going to look like. That's, that's uh, me right there. It's called Mafia 3, and you can just manipulate that any way you want. <clears throat> and then, so I have that coming out, and it's pretty cool. I'm, you know, I'm excited about it, and uh, just be warned, and I, I always tell people this because I know everybody's got kids, and when you say video game, you think kids right away. The language in this thing is atrocious, absolutely atrocious, so just... Know that and understand that it's the, probably not for kids. Picture? It's probably not for kids. Yeah, probably. Below yeah, the age of 16. Yeah. Because it's it's rough language. It's not only rough language, there's a little... It's 
1968, Vietnam era, guy comes home from Vietnam. It's New Orleans. We don't call it New Orleans. We call it New Bordeaux. Um, uh, there's racial tension. We dropped the N-bomb in this thing probably 20 times throughout the video game. Um, and uh, so just be warned. And, and, but there's a lot of great killing and, and stuff like that. And it, and, it's, and, it, and it tells a good story. So there you go.